Hey everyone, Mike B back here with another Bayonet video. Today we're going to be looking at what is probably my personal favorite all-around usage bayonet ever made thus far. We've got the US M9 bayonet. So this has got so many cool features on it. We're just going to start with the, kind of the, a little bit of the history and uh, then we'll move on. So the US M9 bayonet entered service in like 1987. It was designed in 1986. And it's a very thick version of the Soviet Type 1 AKM bayonet. Because it's got the little notch in there, which I'll show you what that's for in a second if you don't know. Got the serration. It just is more of a blade. It looks like more of like a Rambo fighting knife style than the Russian or the Soviet Type 1 AK bayonet. Uh, it's got the same kind of release as the um, M8 bayonet that was introduced in 1965. Um, so it's got a little clamp thing for the, this will fit on an M16A1 all the way up through the M4. It'll fit on everything. It's got a really nice plasticky rubber handle on it that's super hard, and it's actually really comfortable to be used as a fighting knife or a utility knife. So this has been in use for, you know, about almost 30 years, which is crazy. Yeah, it's 30 years this year, actually. Jesus, it's 2017. So this has been in service for 30 years. That's pretty good considering that the M8 was only in service for, what, 20, 22 years? And uh, anyway, so a bunch of companies made these. There's going to be a few different variations. Um, some do not have the fuller, some do. Mine does. This is, I think, what an uh, earlier one looks like. It was made by um, Frobus, which is one of the first contractors. Then Buck Knives made theirs, and they made a civilian version. Um, and then a bunch of other people, like Ontario... And a um, bunch of other manufacturers ended up making these. The earlier ones, that were fr from what I know, like are the kind of in the white like this. They got a finish on them that makes it look like just straight up raw steel, but it's not. It's actually got a coating on it. But uh, the later ones are going to be blued, so it's going to be a darker blade. Um, these are what I had in basic training. They didn't issue these to us after I got out of basic training, but this is what we had. So they still use them, apparently, if they even do bayonet training. It's a pretty valuable tool. I mean, I'll get to that right now. So pretty much it hooks on to the equipment. You can hook it on a molly or whatever. It's kind of like the the Bianchi style where it's got the clips that you hook on right there, and, and they, they hold on pretty well. So once you uh, undo this top strap right here, this just unclips really fast from your belt. So pretend this is still on the belt. That's sitting there. So to use this as a wire cutter, you kind of just hold that little flat back, and it's just like the Soviet Type 1 AK bayonet. So you get that little space right there, and you're going to be using the top of the blade right here as your as your cutter. So yeah, it's the same as that. This sheath is a hell of a lot more robust than the Soviet Type 1 AK sheath. Um, it's thicker, it's made of plastic, so you won't get zapped, hopefully. Theirs is made out of metal with a rubber insulator. So this is just a hell of a lot more robust than the Soviet one. It's bigger, too. Um, so you've got that factor, which is a great thing. You can also use these as a tool. I mean, obviously the blade's really thick, you can see that, compared to other knives. It's just a beast. It's really beefy. Um, one other cool feature that a lot of people don't know about is in the back there is a snap. Oh, good God. And it is a pain in the ass to get out. There we go. Just about chopped my finger off. Oh, that's what that thing is. You actually pull the flap on the bottom. There is a stone, a sharpening stone, built into the scabbard in the back. This one's been worn down a little bit. You can see that. So... Yep. So you can actually use this as a knife. You've got a sharpening stone. It's pretty much a badass survival knife that hooks onto an M16. <laughs> so what's there not to love about that? But no, I really like this knife. Um, I would carry it even if I wasn't, you know, carrying an M16. I'd still carry this as like a utility knife or a fighting knife or a tool pretty much for a bunch of different uses. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I've got on this knife. It's pretty sweet. And, um, I, I love it, and I'm glad they still use this because this is a really sweet design. And it just—I mean—it just looks awesome. It's like the symbol of the United States bayonet nowadays. A lot of countries use these. Um, Canada uses them unless they switched recently. 
bunch of other countries kind of adopted this and I can see why or some variation of this uh, EOD uses a version like this it's got like a different pommel it's got like a hammer you can use it as a hammer or something but it's got the same sheath and everything it's called the M11 but uh, yeah the M9 is still serving and a lot of them are getting surplused out I think because um, people aren't just aren't issuing bayonets like they used to so they're getting a lot of them are getting surplused out they're pretty expensive but for what they are I think they're worth it you're gonna be paying over a hundred dollars for a, a Frobus one and the blued ones, the later ones, are going to be like seventy to a hundred dollars, depending on condition. I like the Frobus ones. I like the looks of the, the in the white blade, pretty much the old school, like that. I just like the look of that better. And yeah, it looks like a freaking you know Rambo knife, but yeah. All right, so that's it for this, guys. And uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you check out the link to my Patreon in the description because you would have seen this quite a bit sooner than you're seeing it right now, because I release a lot of videos like this um, prior to their release on YouTube, on Patreon, so my subscribers can get the first view and we can have discussions about stuff and answer questions before it even airs on YouTube. Um, some videos I don't air on YouTube, so that's another reason to subscribe, and I do frequent giveaways on Patreon, so check that out. Um, if you don't want to do that, okay. Uh, just like this video and subscribe to the channel, because there's plenty of cool videos like this. Um, appreciate you watching everybody and we'll see you next time.